Hey, everybody. I'm going to start trying some new things on the podcast this year. And so I'm really excited to say that this episode will be like my first legitimate real-time interview. Hopefully this is just the first of many. My guest for today's show, his name is Shotgun Mike Hostetler, host of the appropriately named Shotgun Mike Hostetler Show. You can find his website at hunchbunny.com or flumboat.com. Or you, if you just prefer, you can search for the Shotgun Mike Hostetler Show. And just a heads up before we get started, though, this episode might not be safe for work, of course, depending on where you work. Uh, if you work on a construction site, I don't think anyone's going to care. Due to a little bit of swearing, nothing too horrible. And we also get a little bit into the subject matter of Santa Claus. So this episode is definitely not something that you want to listen to with small children around. All right, so you've been warned. Oh, and uh, also I had some issues trying to use my usual microphone. So the sound quality on my end isn't going to be as decent as it normally is. And by the time I realized that there was a problem, it was just kind of too late to do anything about it. And I didn't want to waste my guest time trying to figure out what it was. Uh, but I'll try to get things right before the next interview. And it doesn't matter because I didn't really talk that much. Uh, I let Mike talk most of the episode. And it was a really fun episode. And I think the quality of the guest will make it worth a listen. He's a really funny, interesting guy, and he's kind of weird in a good way, and uh, I would like to thank him for joining me today, and I hope you all enjoy it, and here we go. The Great Big Intergalactic. Let me uh, introduce myself. Well, I guess I'm... uh... I am, uh, well, I'm Mike. I'm Mike Hastetler. I'm Shaq and Mike Hastetler. I'm the host of the Shaq and Mike Hastetler show. I had this phobia about saying my name out loud, and uh, my doctor said, why don't you uh, come over to the podcast where you have to introduce it all the time? But yeah, yeah. that's my show. My show. I'm, I'm, I'm Mike Hastetler, and my show is the Shaq and Mike Hastetler show on all available formats. You said in one of your uh, episodes that a lot of people mispronounce your name. Is that right? Sort of. Well, that's sort of the joke, is because people yeah. used to mispronounce it. Something that I noticed a while ago is that uh, I say it all the time. I say, this is Shaq and Mike Hostetler on the Shaq and Mike Hostetler show. I've literally said it twice, and if I say it, da, 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 over and over and over. And so people will listen to me, or listen to the show, and I can tell sometimes that they're a little nervous that they're going to say Hosteletter or Hostetler, or something like that. And it doesn't matter, because I couldn't care less. The fact of the matter is, is I used to do a podcast a long time ago for a studio where we would feature the music of bands that had come through and recorded and interview them and play their music. And um, there was a time when uh, things looked like they might be coming to a close there and they said they wanted me to change the name of the show because it was a radio show then i took it over and it was a radio show and a podcast we called it uh, the the gbs radio show long time uh, fans are well aware of that show but uh then i said oh well, let's call it the uh, <clears throat> the shock and my cat show show which was a silly name that a friend of mine said to use because uh, I think he thought it sounded exciting. And, <laughs> um, and a shotgun microphone is a sort of a microphone. It is a microphone type that has a very focused uh, pattern. Yeah, this isn't that long ago, to be honest with you. It might have only yeah. been like, Gosh, I don't even know. It would have been 2012. So it was a while ago. Jazz was 10 years ago. Shit. I was just a baby a few minutes ago. But, <laughs> um, yeah, no, it was, it was in Detroit. And in Detroit, they had this AM radio station. It was sort of like this hipster indie thing where they played cool, weird stuff. And uh, they played this show. Uh, that became my show. That was my show. And it was real fun. They were great guys. I did the first episode, and I did a little bit about how, I'm all joking around, I said uh, that uh, I was a natural to be working in this because my grandfather was the one who used to provide the uh, backwards satanic messages in all those 70s recordings. Then I did a thing where I recorded a backwards message and uh, blah, blah, blah. 
this was a straight podcast. And then the guys came in the next time and they're like, yeah, we listened to your podcast. And I thought, oh shit, they're going to get mad at me. And uh, they're like, oh, we love that backwards message thing you did. Do more like that. And so it was nice. And then it turned into a thing where it's just weird stuff. And I used to interview people and then uh, I play music of bands. And now I just do whatever. I talk to whoever or whomever, whatever the case may be. What were some of the big like backwards recordings back in the 70s that you would hear on records? Good question. There are, uh, that's, that's a good one. Because the big one that I can remember, the only one I can remember, the big one was I Bury Paul. Right, that's the that's one I, I remember too. That's the one I remember. And because um, there's a Butthole Surfer song from, uh, I think it was like 97 or 6 or so, that uh, I actually have the record for it. And uh, because it has a part in the middle where they play a backwards message or backwards, backwards. And it's just him singing the chorus, but they played it backwards. So that was kind of a letdown. And uh, I'm trying to think. There's got to be a bunch of other ones. That was the thing, though. Here's the thing with backwards messages, because I've done my homework on them, because uh, I am a huge fan. The backward message was a two-part thing, because part of it was a myth, because... You can hear somebody talking backwards. So if I said sheer backwards, it would say reesh. Reesh. Yeah. And so you yeah. can talk backwards. Uh, if you've ever seen every David Lynch movies, speaking of backwards, he does whole scenes where I believe they're reading their lines backwards and then they play the film backwards. It's very unusual. Amazing. It's wonderful. But that's the kind of backward masking that is like backwards messages. And you can hear that very clearly on records. And you'll hear like uh, old 70s things. There'll be backwards guitar solos and stuff. Because back in the 70s, they had reel-to-reel machines. And if you wanted to record something backwards, all you did was go to the end of this part you wanted to record, take the two tapes, put them on the different reels, and it would play it backwards. And, uh, yeah, that's how it worked. And that's how they did it. Now you can do it digital. Point is, is that was the real backwards. But then it became a fake thing where people said there were satanic messages and stuff. <laughs> which, uh, that is all a myth. Because your brain doesn't decipher backwards messages um, as much as we might like to think it does. It just hears them as gobbledygook. And uh, if it's buried in the back of a record, I don't think you're going to hear that. If you can't hear, like, the drummer chewing gum, you can't hear the satanic message. Is that a keyboard in your, in your background there? Are you oh, there? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. See, that's the thing about my podcast, too, that your listeners will soon uh, discover, because they're going to want to go to it once they hear this. Um, it is a, when I started doing it, it was meant to be weird and stuff, and I do music and stuff, and I was into weird, um, I guess you could say, underground-ish kind of radio. Uh, most notably, there was a band out of San Francisco from years ago called Negative Land. They just put out uh, something uh, this year. And they do mixed media things where they alter audio. And they also have a radio show. It's almost like a thing where you can jam it by using a shortwave transmitter. You can get on and they do a whole thing. It's a whole thing. I recommend it highly. Anyway, well, the let me stop you for a second let's let's explain a little bit about your podcast it's it's serious right. conversations but it's done in a psychedelic manner is that oh a yeah but that's a great way to put it i'm trying to shy <laughs> away from the word psychedelic i feel it can maybe scare some people but yes exactly that well it's two things the first thing is is sometimes when i'm listening to podcasts i'm like uh this is getting kind of boring sometimes sometimes not all the time so I thought, oh, well, this will be something for, like, maybe some of the guys, who, some of the listeners, some of the kids who are maybe a little stoned. They'll, they'll just listen to it because it's weird. And uh, they'll learn something, maybe. But maybe they won't. Or maybe not. 
but I don't even know. It was more like, again, it was ripping off negative land and then other people just being weird, but playing with sound because it's an alternate reality. I like that about, that's what I liked about podcasting when it first came out. You know, it's funny, YouTube used to be kind of like that where you could just have a video show on YouTube. It'd just be stupid and weird and... Now it's a little different, and podcasting, hopefully it doesn't have to go that route, but it seems like, I don't know where it's going, but it, it's all basically two people talking, and I don't, that, mine started from a, an open field. I was, let's do whatever we feel like. I've got one episode that is literally me cleaning my apartment, and I don't think I even say a word, and there's no music or anything. But uh, I felt it went good uh, in, the, in the middle of the two shows. They were real talkative shows. I think I had three guests on one of them. You know, you need some silence. So I like to balance it out. Some of the things that you do, you put effects on people's voices. Um, put effects on yes. And then you also you put some kind of weird uh, ambient type, uh, maybe down tempo type music in the background. Oh, sure. Well, that's music that I'm making at home. And uh, that's music where I'm taking things and I'm uh, sampling them and uh, cutting them and altering them in various synthesizers. Here, I got a good one right here. I just got it. <laughs> it's like a hand store. It's this baby toy. I don't know if you can see it. <laughs> okay, well, well, what you have in your hand is a a toy that has a little loop on it and the baby would push the exactly and you can uh, the, the little parts up and down the, the oh, yeah, you can wire exactly. so yeah. you get that yeah but yeah. that makes noises that you use sometimes i use the squeaking of it or whatever i can use to do that a, a squeaking thing oh here's something else i got i got this uh this is a uh, i don't know what this is it's like a uh I think it's meant to be a bird feeder. Yeah, it looks like a barn, but it has a hole in the middle where maybe a bird could go in there. But it has these strings on it. Here, you can hear it. Oh, yeah. yeah. So this, so I sampled those. I found this. I had these uh, things. I was stroking it with uh, various things, uh, picks and pieces of felt. Then I put that into a synthesizer, and I do all the synthesizing with it, and it sounds like, a bunch of craziness, and that's what the show is. It's basically a sonic expansion of uh, consciousness for people who just don't want to listen to, uh, I don't know, the world anymore. Have you heard the song, Somebody That I Used To Know, by Gautier? Oh, yeah. 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 It, it was an interesting making of that song. That was He kind of is doing some of the same things that you're doing, where it's just like, hey, what, what noise does this thing make? So that that you hear in that song yeah he's, he's finding weird instruments that aren't very popular that maybe they found in some back country and you know that we don't know about you know and exactly uh, i mean that's pretty cool and that's a very unique uh song somebody that i used to know yeah exactly and it's also a, it's also an element of the modern age because once i've recorded this uh bird house of whatever we can destroy it. Who cares now? It's digital. It's all set. So that's what's fun about, because back in the old days, if he wanted to uh, use that in a song, when he went on tour, he'd have to take that. If it was the only one in the world and it broke, what would he do? Yeah. He'd be done for. But yeah, exactly. Well, that's just it. That's where I kind of came from. I was doing stuff like that. I was doing uh, music and sound and trying to see what would happen. Did you perform in bands? Yeah, I went to school for music, actually. I went to college for music. It's a whole thing. Yeah, I'm a bona fide musician. I just don't talk about it too much because I want yeah. my, uh, my podcasting career to be my real, uh, <laughs> my sarcastic persona is what I want to be known for, not my... I actually really enjoy a lot of down tempo ambient type music myself. I don't know if you know who Steve Roach is, but oh, yeah. He, yeah, I'm really into that type of music. Like, if anytime I want to sit down and get some work done, I'll play like Infinite Shore, Early Man, or one of those songs. And it just gets me in this mood to work, and I can just sit there for hours and, and get things done. 
And it just really puts me in a kind of different state of mind where it just kind of calms me down. My brain always has something going through it. And like the, the more ambient down tempo music just kind of settles me down. And sometimes I wonder, is that how other people feel all the time? You know, like they're naturally that calm and that's how they can accomplish so much. I do. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think that's why. They, I don't. I don't think anyone's accomplishing nearly as much as we all seem to think they are. It's interesting because I do think that it's funny because I have the same feeling, and I listen to, like, I can listen to music, music, uh, whatever you want to call it, pop music or music or whatever variety from whatever. But when I'm listening to like ambient or even like uh, i like a lot of 20th century music which is just uh people banging th well you know they're really but it's it's very sound oriented and microtonal and it's like that or steve roach or things like that where it's almost like you're hypnotized and and i like that and uh yeah that's a good part of uh music uh so i mean i yeah i like that and it's on the show have any of your guests um, been kind of surprised about how unique the presentation is? Have you heard any feedback one way or the other? Well, I'll tell you, that's actually an interesting little tidbit because uh, I, uh, yeah, 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 well, that's just it. It goes one of three ways. Well, it goes one of two ways. Well, I guess it's three ways. It goes one in two and a half ways. Three and a half ways. Here's what it does. It's a, it's a fraction because the way it works is this. People come on and they're one of three people. They've heard, they ask to hear the show. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and I play it for them. I guess that's it. There's a very, there's a lot of variations. Point is, is there's few people that hear the show. They either ask to hear it or they find out on their own. And with that, some I've had, I've only had like two people. Well, I can't tell, maybe, maybe more. I've had a few people flake out, and I've had one person just say, Oh, I don't think this is right for me. And <laughs> I think they thought I would be, I don't know what they thought. I don't know what they thought because I'm not belittling anything, or this isn't like wacky sound effects, or you know. This is uh, more almost trying to dramatize or sort of keep this story going with music and sound. And uh, so some people shy away from it. Some people uh, are all on board. And then the, what, the, the kind of guest that I, is personally my favorite, is the kind that is a little scared and is a little nervous, but they do it anyway. And they uh, just say, okay, screw it. Let's see what happens. And that always ends up real fun because uh, I always, just, I don't know, just because I think they aren't expecting me to. Uh, I don't alter anything. Like if somebody says yes, I don't make them say no. And if somebody says, I, I don't know. I mean, if somebody said something horrible, I, I don't take it out. I mean... Nobody says anything horrible. I don't have horrible people. On. But if I did, if any horrible people want to come on my podcast, feel free. I won't take it out. I won't endorse it, obviously. And I might put silly music behind it. I was thinking of doing that. I was thinking somebody how I wanted to have, uh, like, somebody who, like, and I'm picking this out of the air. Well, I don't want it to be controversial, but said, oh, you get, like, a Nazi. I don't, I'm a not a Nazi. Don't agree with anything they stand for. But, but let's see what they got to say. And uh, nothing but uh, 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 resistance from all my friends. And then I, I got from a few, if I put clown music under it or something silly and then put it in a high squeaky voice, they said, well, maybe that would be okay. But that wouldn't, would that be, that'd be sort of unfair. I did have a Mormon on, my, on the show, got here a few years ago, who uh, left the church. He, uh, oh, is this Tom? Yeah, I know. I don't know if it was Tom. Yes, I don't know. Was it the Tom? Because uh, I think I've seen Tom. This guy's name, he no longer exists. That's the weird thing is because uh, he was talking about how they get you, how they come back for you. They, oh, wow. uh, yeah, he said it'll happen. He said they'll wait outside your house and get you. And he lived with a few guys. 
and we got done and i said oh well we'll get in touch in like a few months so we can see how things are going he had just left he was staying with a few mormons in salt lake city that had all defected and they were all kind of staying taking care of each other and uh, i said oh well, i'll get in touch in a few weeks or a few months and then when i went to his account was uh, uh everything was gone his email was gone mm-hmm. and his account was gone and I don't know. I think they got him. Um, and I, I just talked to somebody recently who is in the same situation. So, oh yeah, yeah. No, this guy. I saw that guy because I wanted to get him on. I think, and it's funny. I actually think. Well, he might not be the one. I think Geese might have said he didn't. He didn't want to be on my show. He didn't feel it represented this or that. Which I mm-hmm. don't get what he's talking about. I don't get what he's talking about. What does he think, you know? What is he thinking? What is he thinking? Mm. I always just kind of, if people want to be part of it, that's fine. If, if they don't, that's fine, too. I, I just... Oh, it's fine, too. It's such as life. really angry. <laughs> no, I'm not angry. I'm not angry. It's okay. No, it's fine. It's fine. It's interesting, though, because it is one of those things where... One of the things I like about podcasting is, like, what we're doing here. You can just kind of talk, you can do whatever, and there's no pressure to uh, hit marks or hit points. Um, that's actually something that I do get, I don't know, I don't get annoyed by because it it's part of the world we live in, but I, that's why I want to like start getting more repeat guests because when you have repeat guests, you don't have to do the whole spiel about what they're doing. Then you can talk about the normal things and that's what i kind of feel is like uh a little more I fun no a little more fun a little more interesting like when i hear somebody talk about their band uh who gives a shit you know or somebody <laughs> that's like hearing somebody talk about their kids no offense but it's like you love that kid you love that band i lo- like them but uh, so it's one of those things where I feel like you've got to avoid that. And I feel like when that's how I feel like why TV and all that's sort of dying. It's like, it's just shilling stuff. It's, it's, it's selling bullshit. And, uh, yeah, that's why so, nobody wants to watch it. So as a former radio talk show host or whatever that was, a music yeah. show, how do you feel about the state of music right now? Do you think it's you think it's good right now? You think it's well, yeah, oh yeah. Well, it's always good. It's always good. It's always good. It's always changing. Uh, the thing that's weird nowadays, though, I would say, as opposed to even, gosh, even like ten years ago, is it just seems like music is almost meaningless. It seems like. Put it this way, there's music that people like. Like, there's music that I'll discover either through something like YouTube or a friend or even, like, something like Bandcamp. Or i got to say, I found this one thing where it's, like, a friend of a, a guy who I used to know from that old podcast. It was his band, and there was this one song I really liked. I found it. It was online, blah, blah, blah. Point being, no one's buying it anymore. So that's a big part of it. It's gone. The, the money's gone. Right. Um, for the most part. That's not a huge deal because, to be honest with you, uh, that's the way music used to be up until basically, well, basically the invention of records. Mm. Well, but, well, actually, the way it works, to be honest with you, it was sheet music. People bought sheet music and you had to learn how to play an instrument, which everyone sort of knew how to do. Then it became records. People bought records. Obviously, then, uh, da da da, CDs, and then now it's what it is, where it's not a physical matter. But um, so the point being is there's nothing you can really pay for. Because even with like the sheet music, once you learn the song, you didn't have to read the sheet music anymore. So it's interesting because musicians have always been starving artists. Then there came a period where they made a lot of money. And then it came the era of the internet where they stopped making a lot of money because you could get their music for free. 
or what really killed it to be honest with you here's the thing people say spotify killed it or whatever people can be all whiny about it Mm -hmm. the fact of the matter is is that spotify didn't kill neil young or whoever they're saying it is what it is is that these guys and you can look at it they put out a record they were on a contract to put out a record a year a real artist, a real artist, quote unquote, is working on their art for a long period of time. And they, a year is not a long period of time. Um, you can get some good ideas down and sure you can get a producer and you can turn those into great records. And I'm not saying that great records don't exist in this, in this world, but what it was was a world where it was, if you weren't making music in this world, you weren't going to be hurt. And it had to come out every year. So it was basically just a product that was garbage. And that's why first records are usually the best records, because I've they heard, had five years to work on it. Right, right. I've heard people say that, that you have your whole life, your entire life to make your first record, and you have 12 months to make the next one. Exactly. And then there's other things, too, where you have your first record, and it has a relative hit. And you've got all these new people that like that song. But that song is really not the kind of song you do. But maybe we could start doing this. And it was a whole thing where that's fine. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's, uh, I guess. But what it was, was, actually what it was, was it turned into a, a weird period that I personally love. But that was a period in the late 70s, early 80s, where you have bands locked into contracts, uh, and they were going to make a record no matter what. Um, one of my favorites is Ziggy Pop, and Spotify and all that's a great way to hear. Listen to the records he did in the late 70s. He was whacked out on drugs, probably didn't know where he was, what he was doing, barely a record. And you're like, wow, they put this out on a major label. This got played on the radio. Uh, why? The reason why is because... You know, only 10 records were coming out a week at that time. You could only buy them at Kmart. And if the Kmart in Boise, Idaho didn't have that record, you weren't going to buy it. So you, you know, you needed to put stuff out. You needed to sell as much as you could. as, And you need to have the other part of that was limiting that market. So you had to get it into a record store. You had to get nationwide distribution. You had to go on tour so that the radio station would play it so that it would be in that record store. And then when YouTube and uh, what was the first one called? Uh, Napster, Napster and things like that, LimeWire. When those things started to come about, then it all started to go to shit. And the fact of the matter is is what they were doing is they were putting out one song per record so you'd buy the neil young record for this neil young song the one good song the rest is garbage he knows that he just needs to sell records and as we pointed out it's hard to write 12 new songs so that's what they did now they're all upset because people are buying the one song and not even only that they're listening to the one song on spotify so now instead of getting $15 for one song, they're probably getting like 0.4 cents a month for that one song. I would say towards the end of when CDs were popular, it was more like $18, $19 a, a CD. Well, like, there you go. Exactly. And it, exactly. It, it, I think when I first started buying music, you could probably get it for like $9, $10. And by the time I got towards the end, it was like eighteen twenty. And it's kind of like food nowadays. Like everything costs more nowadays. Like, I went to the grocery store the other day and I uh, wanted to buy some chips and salsa. And it was like $15 for the two things. And I'm like, I'm not buying this. And, th- and that's how I felt about music at the end. It's like, I'm not buying an entire $18, $19 CD for one song. That's just it. And that was the problem kind of that people, and you know, not, a, you know, there's some artists out there, but it became just that it became, a, 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 it became such a money a big business, I guess. It was such a big money machine that it's uh, when the bottom fell out, they nobody knew what to do um, because they didn't set it up where you had people that were... People weren't famous or being promoted based on merit or 
songwriting, I guess. Not to say that they ever, I mean, that you could. That's just it. I mean, artists are meant to starve to some degree because they're not there to, uh, well, that's just it. Then you get into commerce because then it's commercial. So I'm not saying like artists shouldn't make a good record every few months, but it is a bunch of bullshit because now what they do is if you aren't, you know, if you aren't doing something that people want to listen to, and that the other thing too is what do people listen to? They don't. It's like it's like real centralized markets now. Some people want to listen to whatever dubstep, you know. And it's like yeah. that's their market. It's almost like rockabilly. People are there's a people that are into rockabilly and they dress like they live in the fifties and they dance to that and they go to a place in their town that has it. And they know all the people there, or what? And it's yeah, but that doesn't happen anymore either now because people don't go out anymore. No, not really. I, I feel like twenty twenty changed a lot of people like drastically. I do too. I, I think in two thousand nineteen, everybody was going outside, and something about twenty twenty just conditioned people. You know, I don't need to do that. I can sit at home on my computer and do whatever they need to do. You know, I, yeah. I, I don't like this new world. Well. <laughs> It's, I don't, yeah, it's different. Uh, I don't know if I like it that much, uh, but it's interesting because it is like that. But I think what happened was this. I'm super cynical, so f- forgive me, but I think what happened was everybody in the world thought to themselves, God, I can't get away from this internet. I'm on the internet. I love this internet. Ugh, I got to go outside and get some fresh air. Because when you were a little kid, that's what you were told to do. And for some reason, we were told that we had to, and we knew that. And we, we knew we were in front of the computer. We knew that. We knew that. COVID came, and COVID took us off the hook. It was like, oh, now we can't go out. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, okay, well, now I guess I won't get dressed for weeks at a time. And, <laughs> oh, you know, I, this is great. And sure enough, uh, I think people were like, this is great. Why were we going out? Why was I going to a movie? You know, movie theaters are going to die. It's like, why would I go to a movie theater to see uh, a movie and have people talking and this and that when I can pause this for the bathroom and blah, blah, blah. You know, it's like, so it's going to have, I don't know. The other thing, too, is that I think the computers are going to take us over and they're going to integrate us into them. And in order to do that, we got to stop going out. They've got to get us comfortable with chairs that will you know read our minds and sort of put us into a daze and they're not going to get that if we're going out to the bar they need us at home so it's all part of that too but that's a whole nother story i'm pretty sure it affected me pretty badly myself it's like i was a very social person in 2019 and uh i am not in 2023 really yeah. Well, what changed? What aren't you doing that you were doing before? Uh, I used to lead social groups, and I'd have dozens of friends in my last city I lived in. And I, I moved recently, and I just really haven't had felt that like need, that desire to get out and meet people. I think it's something I need to work on, but at the same time, I, I also think it's a result of some of the things that happened during the lockdown people rush to the internet to share hatred towards each other almost. You know, there's so much vitriol during that time. And I remember that. I can't forget it. Especially if you're like an, on an anonymous website or whatever. You heard a lot of things that people thought. And then when I go out into the world, I think, which one of you was thinking this? <laughs> you know, the secret. Yeah. Thing. Well, that's just, yeah. That's what, I almost wonder if that is part of it because... I wonder if now people think, people used to go, oh, I'm going to go to the bar and uh, either meet some friends, which would be Fred, who is my friend, and then Fred's three friends, who are my friends, but they're Fred's friends, and then my friends, you know, that kind of a thing. So you might not know them that well, but now that you know them online, you know that they're a huge racist or something, and it's like, uh, I got to hang out with him. And I'm not saying that we should be hanging. I mean, I'm not saying, well, that's just it. I guess it's funny because that's what it comes down to because, yeah, I don't know. I have a, I have family that uh, I think, I think that, well, here's what happened. Uh, when COVID happened, um, I got it. 
I worked for a job doing AV and um, we were deemed an essential business because we needed to set up AV for conferencing because no one could go anywhere anymore. So I was working and I got COVID right away. Like I got, I got it like the, uh, I think the October after the lockdown. And there was no vaccine and it was still really up in the air. It, you know, it all started in March in this country or February or whenever. And I actually, what it was, it was, I was actually in Dallas, Texas, and they locked down everything and they closed the airport. And I was able to get one flight back, but everything closed down. And um, I think I got COVID then too, but that's another story. But anyway, a few months went by and uh, no one was getting COVID. And I kept, and everyone was talking shit about it, you know, like, oh, it's fake, it's uh, this or that. Or people different sides, you know, that's when it all started. And uh, I was like, well, I just want to meet someone who gets it because I've I always found I like to talk to a person who's actually been there to get an opinion, not, you know, stay right. forth hand. Yeah, it just makes sense. And I wasn't, I had no agenda. And then I got COVID and I was like the first person I knew who got it and I I literally would have never known I had it had I not been told I might have it and I mm. tested for it yeah. and I tested for it and I showed up for it and I never had a temperature. I never felt sick. I was really tired for like a few days in the middle there and I had muscle aches, but nothing I couldn't, I would have worked had I, had I not known. I would have thought, oh, this is you know, whatever. I would have worked. And anyway, I would say that to friends after all that. And they just hated me. They thought, oh, you're a denier of... And I said, no, no, no. I, this was, again, before anything. And I was like, no, no, no. I'm just saying it was weird. Isn't it weird how it didn't affect me? I was almost like kind of saying, like, maybe I'm a superhuman and I should be given a little more uh, respect than I'm getting over here. But no, they wouldn't have that. I, I find that fascinating how people just kind of... Uh are disinterested in people's firsthand account of what they went through. Like, for example, Eric Clapton, right? I don't know if you remember that story. When he when he got COVID, or no, he got the vaccine. That's what yeah. it was. And he said his hand swelled up and he almost died. I actually heard somebody the other day, somebody that I know in real life, pretty much telling the same story about their son. They were He was holding his son's hand in the hospital by his bedside and, and while he thought his son was going to die after taking the vaccine. And to counter that, and the opposite side, I've heard people talk about how their healthy 20-something-year-old niece, whatever it was, uh, got COVID, and she had to have her brain cut open to reduce swelling. Wow. And I asked him, I'm like, is she okay? And he's like, no, she's never been the same. She used to be this healthy, virile, is that the word, person? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And now she's kind of a just a different person, you know? I don't know, like maybe her brain wasn't working properly anymore. So, well, yeah, but it's that's so scary though, because that can happen. And, and it's strange because I know a guy and he was 20, early 20s, and he got it again also um, before a vaccine and the vaccine and ending. And he had it really bad. And now he has asthma for the rest of his life and he has to carry an inhaler. And, uh, I was talking to a friend that's a doctor, and uh, she said uh, she you know, she worked with older people, but she said she knew a lot of people that died of it. But then the flip side of it is, as we said, I didn't have a bad reaction to it, and I do know somebody that died from one of the boosters. And I got to say, also, I got the vaccine, and that was a thousand times worse than actually having it. I thought I was going to yeah. die when I got the vaccine. Ugh. But the weird thing is, like you said, it's like, that's your personal story. That's your account of what happened. And your account is less valuable to people. You sharing what happened to you make people dislike you and label you as something you know, as one side or the other. But you're not really choosing a side. You're just telling your story. Well, yeah, that's just it. And I mean, it's that's what's so weird about it. I mean, but that's the world we live in because you've got to be controversial and everyone's controversial and i mean i don't know i guess it doesn't the thing is is that no matter how i feel about the ukraine or being there 
nothing's going to change. I don't know if people realize that. I can say I'm totally opposed to being there. We're not going to pull out. They don't need to worry. If people are worried that we're suddenly going to become overrun by communists, don't worry. I don't think anyone's listening to me. And if they were, I might really put a lot more thought or a little more thought. But that's the thing is, like, I don't know. I find it, I don't know. It's a strange thing, I guess. I guess people don't, I don't know. Do people not talk? Maybe that's what it is. I think people don't talk anymore. My opinion is that as religion goes away, like, um, you know, in the old days, people were very religious. And the numbers show that people are kind of getting away from the church and getting away from religion in general. And as religion kind of starts to go away, I believe that people are clinging to a different religion. And that religion is kind of like ideologies, like maybe social media or or, or media or government or maybe the government is their God. I don't know. Whatever they say is basically like the Bible. And I think in the same way that if you were to, in the old days, if you were to criticize something from Christianity or from religion, you would be considered a heretic, you know? And nowadays I, I kind of get that same vibe from people who uh, are contrarian to maybe like uh, ideologies that you might hear in the modern mainstream these days. Oh, for sure. Yeah, no, that's exactly it. it it's very strange. And it is a weird thing that happened. I'm guessing it happened if I had to place blame, I don't, not blame, but I almost feel like it was a, a causal relationship because of Trump. Because what it was, was before we all agreed that all politicians were scumbags. But now some people were a little angrier than they were before. And then other people were also a little angrier saying, yeah, they are all scumbags. And I, yeah, and that's a whole thing where like I had a, my cousin who I've always considered to be totally in line with me. I saw him around Christmas and I said something about, and I think he's one of these things, people that misunderstand me and thinks I'm not who I am. But I said something about how I didn't care. I forgot what I even said about how I couldn't care less about the January 6th stuff. Not that I don't care. And I know it was bad. It was a bad thing that happened and it's scary, but there's two things. If you overthrow a building in the capital of a country, that doesn't mean you run the country. That's like a fact. I've looked it up. You, <laughs> they were not going to, they weren't going to be running the country. They could be in that building still and not have left. That doesn't mean they're running the country. So we didn't need to worry that much there. It's a tragedy what happened. It's sad that people got hurt, uh, whatever. Uh, it was not a people, coup. Yeah, and it was not a coup. And the thing is, is this. So here's the thing. And even if it was a coup, even if it was a coup, it's really lame to be <laughs> clinging to that so yeah. far into the future. That is like, yeah. So all I was saying at this Christmas thing was, who gives a shit about that? Let's move on. It's like people are, you know, going, you know, money, the way prices are skyrocketing, the way jobs are met. But anyway, I was basically yelled at because of, uh, I said something about like, uh, uh, what's Biden done? And I got yelled at for Ukraine. And I said, well, who cares about Ukraine? <laughs> but I mean, I feel bad about Ukraine. And I actually had a guest on a few, a, look, a couple of days ago, who was an army guy who was in, who was well, not in Ukraine, in Afghanistan and all that and all over. And uh, he was for it. So I was kind of surprised, but you never know. Cause I would think it'd be a waste of time, but he did. One thing that I'm surprised by, and uh, I'm going to make it clear here. I'm not a huge fan of Trump. I, I voted for Kasich uh, no, and only people in Ohio know who that is. He was good. He was bad. <laughs> but one thing that Trump did really well, a lot of people don't remember this, but in, in Syria, Russia was doing some stuff in Syria and Trump basically told them, get your people out. We're giving you 45 minutes to clear all your mm -hmm. people and we're going to bomb your base in Syria. Trump literally took on the Russians. And I don't think anybody remembers that. Yeah. The thing with that is I, re 
I don't, yeah, I always wonder because that was, I don't, but there you go. See, that's the problem. The problem is we shouldn't trust any of them. <laughs> that's the problem. And that's what happened was one was like, well, this guy's a little worse. And then the, and they would be like, well, yeah. And yeah, that is true. No, he did a few things. The funny thing is, is if you look at things he put into power or place that Biden hasn't reversed, it's like, why isn't, why aren't people making a big deal about that? That's another side of it too. But yes, there's things like that. And he, and occasionally you need a, a, a save or rattler to do that kind of stuff. And Bush was like that, uh, the, like uh, the Bush uh, before uh, Obama was all like, you know, I forget. He was just silly like that. But it was funny how they do that. You get that guy who's the tough guy. Then you get, well, Biden, Biden's just too... To be honest with you, Biden's just too old. He just doesn't remember anything. It's embarrassing. But that's ageist, and I can't say that. But I have no doubt that Russia felt enabled by the fact that Biden's probably a little bit soft, right? Possibly. The other side of it, though, is I kept thinking, isn't his wife, like, Russian? So he's kind of half Russian, you know? (laughs) But that might have helped him, even. I always found the uh, Trump is xenophobic. Um, his wife is from another country, you know. <laughs> well, that's just it. And then the other thing of it, too, was it's funny, too, because in sort of in line with all of, well, I don't know, things that people don't remember, there was all that Russia was behind the election. And now that's all come out. Uh, are you watching the Twitter gate files? Are you watching all of that? What's going on? Uh, yeah. I, I, I'm half paying attention to it, yeah. It's really nothing exciting. Basically, Russia wasn't behind Trump, period. And basically, it's it's everything we already knew, right? Yeah, exactly. Think, it's exactly. I, that the FBI yeah. was in, entrenched in Twitter. Yeah. I don't know if you heard, but uh, they've just uncovered there is no Santa Claus. Oh, oh no. See, I hope no. Let's see. It's one of those things that we probably kind of figured already. Hopefully your listeners have figured that, was, that out by now. But. That was the last Twitter Files release. Yeah, that'd be yeah. funny. I, that, <laughs> that would be a good one. That's the funny thing, though, that it, it goes to, what would that be nowadays? We, could you do that nowadays? Would you be ruining someone's life if you did that? Could I get accused of ruining someone's life if I told them there's no Santa Claus? I suppose it I probably, don't even know. probably depends on their age. That's just it. Probably in the six and up demographic, you're okay. I don't know. <laughs> People are, they, yeah, see, that's what you get, though. I don't know. I don't even know. I wouldn't even know. I don't know. But the thing is, is that's the reality of life. If you are living in a world, and not to get, yeah, that's the reality. That's the problem I have with the world nowadays. If you live in a world where your kid finding out about that there's no Santa Claus freaks you out and you're all freaked out and you're freaking and they're freaking out at you right now and saying, why didn't you put a, a disclaimer saying that we, you said that there was no thing? Kids, listen, if you're in a world where that shatters your life, then you deserve it because it's going to happen sooner or later. And to be honest with you. It wasn't always that way. People didn't always believe in a magical fat man that gave gifts based on merit. So the world won't crumble if we... St- I don't know. There's my thing. I know I don't care too much, but... I'm sick okay. of being told I can't tell children <laughs> there's no Santa Claus. <laughs> That's the one issue I feel strongly about. Just, you just want children, to, like three-year-olds. You, right, you just want to run over the daycare and like... Yeah. And t- t- what is the preach, point? Preach the truth, right? They're weak. They're weak. They're living in fantasy land. Yeah. But no, it's it's okay, I guess. I found out there was no Santa Claus when I was really young because I just asked my mom and she just flat out told me. And uh, so when I went to school, like I was in like nursery school or kindergarten or something and nobody knew. I felt mm. so strong. I felt like the smartest kid in class. Wow. Yeah, it went away a few months later, but <laughs> when you realized you weren't going to get any presents from yeah. Santa, exactly, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> when I was like, "Wait a minute, these people are totally know what they're doing," but no, it's a... so. Are you still in Michigan? I'm not in Michigan. I'm not in Michigan. I'm actually in Ohio myself. I don't know oh, really about too much. 
but uh, I've only been here for a little while. I've moved around. This is the fourth state I've lived in. For, yeah, I think so. I think it's the fourth state I've lived in. So you don't I talk lived in Milwaukee for six months. You don't talk about that because you don't really want people to know. Well, I don't talk about it too much because I'm not from Ohio. I well, where do you live? If you don't mind saying, where I live where in are Columbus. You? I live in Columbus. Oh, Ohio. Right. Okay, I live in Ohio. Yeah, I lived in Columbus for like twice for like ten years. Yeah, uh, yeah. total. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I'm in Florida right now. But. Oh wow! Yeah, really. Okay. I just talked to somebody from Florida. The guy who worked at the jail, right? Yeah, the jail yeah. guy. He was from Florida. I actually, I think I sent him your way, not specifically to you, but uh, oh yeah. But I'm like, go to podcast guest exchange and yeah. and some stuff. So and I told him, I guarantee you, somebody there will will exactly. uh, will, will take you up on your offer because I live in the same city as that guy does, or at least oh, nice. the same region. And uh, yeah, he, was he on your show? No, I think he probably will be. But I went on the local subreddit and I asked him like. Are there any interesting people around here? And he said, yeah, I, I wouldn't mind being on your thing. I'm not really into jail stuff so much. So I, 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 I was worried a little bit. Was, I was worried a little bit that it would be a difficult interview. But after hearing him talk on your show and uh, just thinking exactly. about it just in general, I, I think it'd be fun to have different topics, even if I don't know much about it. No, for sure. Plus, it's crazy to hear about what they do. I didn't even, I when we got done, I had like a million things I wanted to ask him about. And, uh, but uh, I hadn't, you know, we'll do it next time. But yeah, it's funny. No, that's just, the, well, that's what I'm talking about. Because I'll be in situations where I think, for example, but he worked in jail, which was the bummer. Because I wanted yeah, a okay. prison guy. But I like, it's okay. He was great, too. And jail's similar. But I wanted to hear... Well, I wanted to hear if the prison rape thing was still a big deal. I wanted to hear if that was still happening as much and all this and that. And is it that bad? Because that's one of those things, if it wasn't true, you would, no one would ever want it to be told that it's not true because it's a good deterrent. And not that I'm saying that it isn't true, but the other side, too, is that if it is true, I don't know. It seems weird that that many men would be having homosexual sex when they're not homosexuals. Although, if you're in jail for the rest of your life, if you're in a man men's prison for the rest of your life, you're a homosexual, no matter how you feel about it. Right, right. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. But, but yeah, uh, I, I probably will give him an interview here in the near future. My old co host was really into that kind of conversation so maybe what I'll happened to your co-host you drove him I, off your ego? i live we lived in cleveland uh he lives in dc now i live in florida so it's more difficult and also he's going for his phd so he doesn't have as much time to do silly things like podcasts oh really well hey, those are those <laughs> amateurs you're talking about they'll drop <laughs> out sure they don't have the go power they don't know what you're doing <laughs> But uh, you've got to have the heart. You've got to have the, it's got to be in your blood. I used to, when I was a child, I used to literally sit in my room and talk to myself. Now I can do that and call it a podcast. So how do you like Columbus? I hate Columbus. You hate it? I do, really? sort of. I shouldn't say that. <laughs> I'm not a cop. I don't like college and I don't like oh. sports. Oh, okay. Oh, so, yeah. yeah. That's like and the two big weird. things. Yeah, it's like the big, yeah, the big thing. It's funny because uh, I'll tell you, it's a funny little story. Uh, it's a little uh, heartwarming story. But when my mom was a young, she gave a child up for adoption. And when we were younger, like in our, I don't even know when, we found this uh, guy. And uh, I was um, in Michigan at the time. Uh, and I, I just moved back there from Los Angeles and I was looking for work and he's like, oh, why don't you uh, get a job in Columbus? There's lots of work down here. And so I went to Indeed or something in Columbus and I got a job right away, And um, which because it's a boom town. And, uh, and he kept his word. He let me stay with him and he was the greatest and it was so nice and I got to get close to him and his, my, I got a nieces and blah, blah, blah. And I did that, and I got a great job that I really like. 
uh, and I moved out of his house and I met a girl who I've been with for six years. And uh, so it worked out great for me in every possible way, other than it's a bunch of college kids and it's like a weird kind of town that I'm not used to. I'm from Detroit. Yeah, and in Detroit, yeah. we got a way of doing things, and they don't do it <laughs> down here. And so uh, I don't go with that, but it's okay. I, I used to travel up to uh, northern Michigan a lot. Love it up there. Oh, yeah. Actually, That's I'm, real nice. I'm not a huge fan of the cold, which is why I ended up in Florida, but uh, I, I just, the Upper Peninsula, uh, just really anywhere north of, I don't know, maybe Saginaw. It's just so beautiful up there. Oh yeah, yeah. People don't realize that. They, that's like it is like another state, basically, and it is. Yeah, it's up there in the tundra or whatever, way yeah. up there. Yeah, it's a nice place. I mean, that's where I started doing the podcast actually, but that was just it because I, I don't even know if I changed the city I did it in when I moved here because I don't do local stuff. I guess mm-hmm. I, I could. I used to do local stuff, sort of, but... Yeah, I did a local program for like two years with with the co-host that I was talking about earlier. I I don't think it was a good thing because you have like a limited audience, you know? Yeah, that's That's just it. Yeah, not to mention, it goes back to the thing we were saying earlier. If you're going to get people, that's just it. I mean, I know firsthand that I'm an unusual... That I'm 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 who I am. All my life, I've been who I am. And when I had jobs all my life, even present day, people would say, you're a weird guy. If you ever did a podcast, I would love to listen to it. Or they used to say, if you ever do stand up, I'd love to listen to it or whatever. You're a weird. And I thought, okay, that's the trick. I'm just going to go with my weirdness. I'm going (laughs) to let my weirdness take me to where I need to be Be myself. And, uh, that was just it. I, I had to go that route. And uh, I, I do have a question. Does, has anybody told you that you sound like Norm MacDonald? Oh, yeah. I've heard that a lot. <laughs> I get that every once in a while. I get that. And that might be, I'm trying to think who I think I sound like. Well, I don't know. I feel like I'm ripping off a lot of people. But I could be ripping him off. I like him. He's okay. He's good. He's dead now. I don't think you're ripping He's him off. Dead now. I think you just oh, sound like him. him. Exactly. Yes, and I have that very, I don't know, angry, snotty. He's sort of snotty. I don't want to be snotty. I'm not snotty. All right, since you're a music guy, yeah. top five albums of all time. Okay, sure. I don't even know. Yeah. Those are hard to even do. What would that even mean? Or, or just records- five albums that you love. Sure, no, there's, I got tons of them. I love yeah. albums. I've got tons of albums that I love. People should all go out and listen to these albums that I love. It's strange. I think about that a lot. I think about, I was listening to a record the other day, but that goes back to this thing. I thought, I love this record. Yeah, what would I say? I love, yeah, see, they're all going to be weird records. I like weird records. I spend a lot of time. You know what I do? I'll tell you what to do. I go on that allmusic.com and mm. I find something I like. And then I go who see who they liked. Then I go and I find that band online and I listen to them. And I pick the band out that I like there. Then I picked out who they listened to or who was like them or who listened to them. And so, where did it go? I don't know. Who do I like? Top five albums. I'd say Faust So Far, Orb Live 93. Uh, let's say Sonic Youth Daydream Nation. Uh, I don't know. I'm trying to think of what's a more recenter one. Recenter ones are tough because something gives perspective when you can listen to it twice after 10 years and it still holds up. You know, there's this guy, uh, Devin Davis, that probably two people in the world know about. And he put Mm -hmm. out a record called Lonely People of the World Unite. And that's Mm -hmm. on Spotify. And I can listen to that record every day of my life. And I don't think I'll ever get sick of that record. I'll have to check it out. Yeah. And then, uh, I don't know who else. Uh, I guess, uh, yeah, I don't know. I like everything Negative Land did. But they do weird stuff. Yeah, yeah. 
All right. Um, we've been going for a while. Let's uh, tell me where, tell people where to find your podcast. Sure, we'll do that part of the show. Yeah, well, you know, people, when they're done listening to this, you guys just want to go to hunchbunny.com or flumboat.com. I got that URL as well. But uh, you go there. It's the Shotgun Mike Hostetler show. It's my last name. Um, it's actually my like pseudonym. My real name is uh, John Smith. But <laughs> it's my pseudonym, and that's my show. And uh, it's a show where we expand your mind without you even knowing it. And, uh, and it's fun, and it's a good show to listen to. And, uh, yeah, you should come on it. We'll have you come on in a couple months, do a whole back and forth. That'd be great, definitely. I'd well, love cool. to. Cool. I'm going to count on it. Though. Thank you for your time, and, and uh, I look forward to hearing some of your episodes in the upcoming future. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to the show. The Great Big Intergalactic can be heard on Spreaker, Spotify, YouTube, Google Play, Apple iTunes, and anywhere else that podcasts can be heard. If social media is your thing, you can follow the program on Facebook or Twitter. If you enjoy the show, upvote, share, like, and subscribe. Whenever and wherever, those things can be done. If you'd like to send feedback, the easiest way to do that is to email the show at tgbiuniverse at gmail.com. TGBI as in the Great Big Intergalactic. Or you can leave a voicemail at 216-200-7940. Contributions could include written feedback, audio submissions, voicemails, or potentially even live guests. It was great having you today, and see you next time.